Hello there, kia ora. During the election campaign, TVNZ ran something called Vote Compass. It was designed to give you an idea where you sat on the political spectrum and which political parties aligned with your belief system. But one of the other things that they did was also run a massive poll on what New Zealanders wanted to see the government tackle the most when they got into power, whichever government it was going to be. And it's no surprise that the cost of living crisis is the number one issue facing New Zealanders. Things are expensive as hell out there. And Christmas, oh, much, much worse time of year because everybody feels like they're spending money, which I guess is good for number two, the economy. Anyway, yesterday was the last day that Parliament sat for the year, so now we know what laws that they've actually put in place under urgency. This is what their highest priorities are as a government. And they've been trying to tell voters that it's all about the cost of living and dealing with that. But if we take a look at what laws have actually gone through, that doesn't necessarily ring true. Like the Reserve Bank mandate changes, for example. Now, the Reserve Bank's job is to basically make sure the economy is ticking over the way it's supposed to, and it does that through a number of different tools and mechanisms, like setting interest rate levels. And one of the things that they have to take on board when setting interest rate levels is the number of people who are currently employed, like a minimum employment level. And removing that, well, it does speed the process up for them to be able to make changes around interest rates with what's going on, but it means that the number of people actually in work is no longer considered a factor. It also didn't need to be a law. Treasury said all you need to do is issue a remit saying don't do this anymore, but the government wanted a new law under the belt. What they did do, though, was repeal fair pay agreements, and that's a real problem when it comes to the cost of living. You see, this allowed collective bargaining for entire sectors. It's a much easier way to get better pay and safer work conditions for everybody who is involved in those particular processes. By removing that, it means that you lose that power of collective bargaining and much less likely to get any kind of good deal that deals with things like the cost of living crisis that your staff are going to be dealing with. They also remove the clean car discount, which means that you now pay more for things like electric vehicles, which means that the number of people buying them is going to drop, which is clearly not good for the environment, and charging people more for anything is not going to be helping with the cost of living crisis. Might help the economy tick over a little bit, but not by much. There was something called the Secondary Legislation Confirmation Bill. This is just making sure that the government can do what it does, that the bureaucracy is going to tick over. Again, it doesn't help with the cost of living or with the economy, crime, education, the environment, social justice, healthcare, housing, Maori rights, work and pension and labour relations. It doesn't help with any of those, but it does, I guess, count for government operations. There was also repealing the changes or getting rid of the changes to the Resource Management Act and putting the old act back in place, which is already 30 years old, so kind of out of date. And at the same time, they slipped in a little change that really upset some people. They took out the term tetiriti and put in the Treaty of Waitangi, which is clearly not the founding document of this country. Most people, scholars, politicians agree tetiriti is our founding document. So putting in the name for the English version, which is not the English translation, that upset a fair few people and still put in place the same kind of Resource Management Act, which was causing our councils a whole bunch of issues and a lot of money. They also got uh, in place 90-day trials again, which means that people can be employed for 90 days and then fired without warning, which is, again, not great for the cost of living, because what tended to happen under those is you'd have a starting rate and you got through your trial period, and if you got through there, then you might get a pay rise. Well, that doesn't necessarily have to happen, because you can be fired after 90 days anymore, which is slightly concerning. But the big issue that you should be really worried about is the taxation principles reporting repeal. Earlier this year, you might have seen the report that came out saying that the most wealthy in this country aren't paying their fair share in tax, and the government set up a reporting system so they could monitor this, so they could fix things. Well, that report was due out this week, only it's not anymore, because this repeal act pulls that away and makes it impossible for it to be released. And I'm sure it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that the National Party Act and New Zealand First Biggest Donors are some of the richest people in the country and probably don't want that report to see the light of day at all. But it also does literally nothing for the cost of living crisis or dealing with the economy or any of the other issues that New Zealanders have said that they want to have sorted. And that's it. Those are the laws that have been passed. These are the highest priorities for our new government. So while they might sit there and say, oh, yeah, we're helping with the cost of living and the economy, nothing is a quick fix and nothing, nothing that they've done so far is going to help with the cost of living crisis. But that's all right. They'll still jump on the news and start saying things about trans women in sports or making kids smoke so they can pay for tax cuts. That's their priorities.